This is Diana Sullivan in Austin, Texas, and today I'm teaching an elf hat in a baby size made on a bulky machine. Here's the hat in just red and green, and if you get a kick out of this hat, I have a pattern with five sizes, that's baby, toddler, child, tween, adult, and three gauges, bulky, mid-gauge, and standard, and it's over on www.dianaknits.com. I am using Group 4 Worsted Weight Yarn. I've already put a few rows of waste yarn on. This is just something I'll unravel later. It's not part of the hat. It's really just a stitch holder. The last row of this waste yarn is actually going to be used as a ravel cord, a divider row. So I'm bringing down a loop on one end and knitting the last row for my divider row. That makes it easier to get the stitch holder off later. And I am wanting to start from the right hand side, so I'm going to do a free pass. To do a free pass, if I push in this right part button, I can go to the right and it won't disturb anything. And once I'm on the right, it's important that I go ahead and I cancel that button. Now I need to be on tension 8 for a gauge of 3.75 stitches and 5.7 rows to the inch, and I did measure that over 20 stitches and 30 rows. I also need this carriage set on hold so it will short row. And of course I need to thread up with the green yarn for the hem. Now this is the inside of the hem I'm making right now, and it begins with four ordinary rows. I have knitted four plain rows of the green to begin the inside of the hem, and now it's time for me to begin the points. So to do the points, which are groups of six, I mentioned I was on 50 needles, 25 to 25 and I've marked my bed in groups of six. Each group of six is going to be a point on this hem. So six needles from there to there. And I also have an extra stitch on each end for a selvage stitch that will go in the seam because this hat does have a seam right there of the center of the back. So I'm putting everything in hold except for the first group of six and that one selvage stitch on the end. In other words, all except for seven needles here. I have all the needles in hold so they won't knit except for the rightmost seven. That's the selvage stitch and six more. So I knit across those and I'm putting the selvage stitch in hold and now I'm not going to think about it again for a while. Then I have these six to shape into a point and of course for short rowing I need to put a weight under there then it'll short row much better. And I go ahead and I put the first needle on the carriage side. Here's my carriage. So I put this first needle on that side into hold so it goes across and doesn't knit that one. It just laid the yarn over it and knit the rest. Then I put the next needle on the carriage side into hold. My carriage is on the right this time. And knit across and again carriage is on the left. Put this one into hold because I've moved my carriage over and knit across and now the carriage is on the right so I do this one, knit back now the carriage is on the left, I do this one. I'm going to use a little pointed weight here, but if you don't have a nice little pointed weight, you can just keep using these kind. Just put it in at an angle like that, so you get some weight right where you need it. However, I'm going to use that and this little pointed weight, because I have them and they're handy. So now I'm going to knit on across that. Now it's time for me to start increasing. My carriage is on the right. See this is a little piece of the metal of the carriage. So what I'm going to do is increase opposite the carriage. So this side of the point away from the carriage, this will be my first needle to increase. 
and you see I've pushed it back halfway. That's called upper working position and now when I cross the carriage knits it and then I'm going to go opposite the carriage and push this needle into upper working position. So I have three in work. When I put that one in and knit, I have four in work. I put that one in and knit. I have five in work. And then finally, I put this one in, and I have six in work. So I have made a complete point. Let's have a little look at it. It's inside out, but you can see that that is a point right there. And I want to reposition and make another point. So I put these needles in hold so the machine won't do anything with them. Go to the right just so the carriage will be where I want it. Look at where the yarn is coming from. So I'll hold my hand so you can see my yarn's coming from right there. So therefore the next six needles to put are these six. And I make another point in the same way. I put a weight under it and knit over, and then I start doing my decreases, one each row, and I use another weight when things get narrow, and now I start increasing the way I did before. Now I have two that I knitted, I knitted three, I knitted four, I knitted five, and I knitted six, which completes the second point. Bring those needles out of work, put the carriage back on the right to reposition, locate where that yarn is, see that yarn right there, and pick out the next six needles, actually push them back halfway to upper working position to make the next point. Now later I'm going to want a weight on the end, so I'll just throw one in there while I'm thinking about it. Anyway, do it the same way, decrease and knit, 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 and then increase in the same way, two, three, four, and six. I do this all the way across and nothing really changes until the last one. Then I have to deal with that extra selvage stitch. Now I'm doing the fifth point. This will be the sixth point.
now I've gotten to the last point, and I have seven needles left, so it's quite evident I need to deal with that selvage stitch. And first I'm going to make the point on the six needles. So put those in work. Now when it's time to put that last needle in the point and work, get the selvage stitch too. That's all you need to do. And there you go, you have your row of points. Now after all the points are in, you're going to go ahead and knit four rows over all the needles. You can either change the machine to stop doing hold, or you can push the needles all the way across into upper working position your choice, and you do four rows. And now it's time to pick up the hem. Let's have a look at the points. I'm just jabbing a finger in them to pop them out so you can see them really well. And there's the points. I don't think they show tremendously well. It's almost like I need to put something light colored under them. Uh, how about my hat? There. Mm, you can kind of see them. Anyway, I'm going to pick up the hem. And to do that, I'll start over here. I'm going to pick up, starting with the second needle up here, and put these last green stitches that are poking in between the beige onto the needles. I skip that selvage needle because the bottom of a hem is always short one stitch. The bottom of the hem is not really, these guys look like stitches, they're loops, but they're not really a whole stitch. They're really the loop in between stitches. So there's always going to be one less, so don't be dismayed when you go to pick up hems and you're short a stitch. If you're short a stitch, that's exactly what should happen. So I'm picking these up right across so that all of the needles will have two stitches on them except for the selvage on the left. On the right, I'm going to end up with two stitches on those two. I'm threading the carriage with the red yarn and I'm going to knit eight rows with the red. And I'm setting my row counter for zero, zero, zero. So that will actually be row one. That's just going to be helpful, especially the first time you make the hat. Now I've made several, don't really need the row counter, but the pattern's detailed and it'll tell you what to do by what row you're on. And then we cut the red. We cut the red, leaving enough to sew in and we put the white on. These stripes are too long for you to carry the yarn up the side. And I'm going to do eight rows with the white. And now it's time to do decreases. I'm going to do the decreases with the garter bar, and I'm using a bulky garter bar, but you can use a standard gauge garter bar on your bulky machine. If you don't have a garter bar, you can take this off on scrap yarn and decrease that way. Now, these decreases are all across the row. In fact, there's going to be eight decreases. This piece that I just got is called the stopper, and I used it as a pusher to bring the needles out, 
and then I laid it down. The back of the stopper goes behind the back of the needle butts. The toothy side of the stopper goes in front of the gate pegs right here. So it covers these and it goes in between the needles and it stops the needles. Now that it's on there, the needles don't slide in easily and they don't go left and right. They are held in place rigidly which makes it much, much, much easier to use your garter bar. And if you have not enjoyed using your garter bar, you need to get the stopper out because it is the key. Now I'm pushing all the stitches back against the machine. And what that does is it opens every one of the latches. But if I had a closed latch, I could use my credit card, cut at an angle, and make sure everything's open. Then I take the garter bar. For this, it doesn't matter which side is up, but you put these little holes on the tips of the garter bar, these little holes. They go on a hook, each one on a hook. Once everybody's on a hook, if you're a little nervous about this, you can take the tool and close the latches. But you don't really even have to do that. You can just grab the knitting and pull it right onto the garter bar. Now hold the garter bar flat, like parallel to the floor, so that this whole thing is kind of flat like a table. And then just pull all the stitches right onto the garter bar. And I like to pull them all the way on the garter bar, not part way on the garter bar like that, but pull them all the way on. Then tip the garter bar down a little bit. See how I'm swinging it down? Push it back a tiny amount, only less than a half inch, just enough to open every one of those latches. Want to see that again? Look, here's some latches are closed. But if I bring the garter bar down, watch these latches right here. As I push back, the latches open. And that's what I want. I want open latches. Now, I'm going to put down six stitches at a time. So, over on the far left, I have six stitches here that I'm pushing on needles. And then I'm going to pick up the whole bar, take one step to the left, and now I have a stitch here that's going to go on this needle that already has a needle. That is a decrease. It's not a decrease at the edge. We don't want decreases at the very edge. We want them scattered across the row. So I pick out, or actually push back, six more stitches to go on the needles and give them a little push on. Then I pick up my garter bar again, take a step to the left, hang it on again, and put on six more. and a step to the left and put down six more. Step left and six more. Another step, another six. step, and six. Now, when I put down this last six, I'm going to have two left over here on the right. You see I actually have eight left. This is on purpose. I have these two left. I'm going to take a step so that that doubles up the first of the two and put them on. So there we have decreases evenly across the row and eight empty needles. So I use this as a big old pusher, push everybody back into work, and then don't forget on the right, we don't want eight empty needles. We go ahead and push them back. So now all of the needles in work have a stitch. And my next row is red, so I'm going to cut this white yarn 
Now that first red stripe, I didn't do decreases, but from now on, each time I do a stripe, I do decreases. So I'm putting the red in the machine and doing eight rows. I'm going to cut the yarn. I can cut it now, I can cut it later, doesn't really matter, but I will be cutting it. And I'm going to decrease, but this time I'm doing the second decrease. The first one was groups of six, ending with a group of two. This one's going to be groups of five. And I put my garter bar on, pull the stitches on the bar, open the latches and begin. Put down five, take my step to the left, put down five, step to the left, do five, and step to the left, This perfectly spreads the decreases just the way we want them spread. And you know that you've done it just right when you only have two left. You take that step, you double up the second to last one, and push the last one on. Use this as a big old pusher. Push those back. Push your empty needles back out of work. The next stripe is white. we're going to do another garter bar job before we thread up the red. At the end of each stripe I did the decreases. The last one was groups of five and perhaps you already guessed it. This one's going to be groups of four put four down, step to the left, put four down, which of course doubles up the fourth needle, step to the left. Every stripe I have a narrower hat. I'm making that wizard shape or cone shape, or sometimes people call this kind of hat a wazoo because it hangs down. just realized I have never taught a wazoo before. So this will be our first wazoo we've done together. Okay, I have eight empty needles. You'll have eight ev empty needles each time. And I'm going to thread up and do a red stripe. Now that one was groups of four. Guess what? This one will be groups of three. Here. And it's getting to be too much weight, so I'm moving the weights up, but I'm only going to put three of them. I'll take the other two weights and set them aside. Did I say groups of three? If I forget, I can look down below and I clearly see last time was groups of four. And stitches on, 
open the latches, and start plopping down my groups of three. Now sometimes when you're working, some of the latches will come open and if that happens, you've got your cut credit card handy. And it happened to me. So I open and everything is easier. Otherwise you have to kind of fiddle your garter bar around until you can knock one of the latches open. Okay, decreased. Get rid of the eight extra needles. So now I'm over on the left side of the machine. It's getting pretty narrow and I'm going to thread up with the white and do eight rows of white. And now I'm going to do another row of garter bar decreases. This time, two stitches in a group. And when you do two stitches in a group, except for the end needles, you're doubling everything up. And sure enough, you end with two, and you end with only one stitch on the end needles, but every other needle has two stitches on it. So there are not all that many needles left, and we should have ten. Three, six, ten, which is good. And I'm just going to knit a couple rows. I really needn't have cut the white. And then I'm going to sew off. Now I'm leaving a long piece of white for sewing. You can stripe these any way you want. You can use self-striping yarn and you could also use every other row stripe. So knit two red, two white, two red, two white. That was really cute. I tried that one too. And by and large, I decided to go with this one because it was my very favorite. But use what you have and have a good time. I'm just about to sew this off. So I simply poke the needle in the stitch and pull the stitch right off the hook with my needle and then poke in the next one and I can easily stack all ten stitches on my needle. This one came off but I'll get it. Got it. And then I pull that up and I've got a hat. So there's a little bit of finishing to do. Let's talk about that. I have pointed the camera at my lap and there's the hat. And let's start by taking the waist yarn off. So I've removed the waist yarn and you could see the hem. Here's our hem on the wrong side, the pearl side in this case. And then here's how it looks on the right side. So very distinct, elfy little points. And then the, the seaming that needs to be done, I prefer to do by starting at the point of the hat. So here's my point, 
and I just match these two sides like that and I'm going to do a one row mattress stitch. I am using a blunt size 18 tapestry needle to do this sewing. I thread my needle. Make sure the top of the hat is gathered up pretty firmly and really the only problem here is that this yarn is loose. So I'm just going to tuck those to the inside. I will deal with all the ends to hide later. And what I'm doing is going on one side of the seam I want to put in and picking up one bar. That was the side away from me. Then I go to the side toward me and I pick up one bar. Then go across to the side away from me, pick up one bar, my side, go in where I came out, trying to find my spot, there it is, there's my yarn coming out, so there's my spot, back over here, go in where I came out and get one bar, over here, in where I came out and get one bar, one bar because it's a one row mattress stitch. Now, as I work, I haven't drawn this tight yet, but I want you to visualize this right here is a column of stitches, and every time I've stitched in there, I've stayed between that column of stitches and the very end stitch, and then this over here is also a column of stitches. So I pull that tight, and I've got a few more before I get to a color change. So I take a bar on my side, a bar on the side away from me, going in where I came out and getting only one bar. Then on my side, just one. The side opposite me, just one. My side, just one. The opposite side, just one. My side, get one. Now, it is apparent on the side opposite me that this is the last stitch next to this white bar. And on my side, this is the last bar next to these white stitches. So that's good, that matched. And now I'm going to get the last white loop picking between the red stuff. And over here, uh, again, that last white loop picking between the red stuff that means I've matched my stripe. Now, because the seam is so invisible, you don't really have to change colors for each stripe. You can if you're really perfectionistic, but I'm not. It's just an elf hat. So I'm getting my red bar, my red bar, red bar, red bar. and red, and red, and red. I'm just going to show you this one more matchup, and then you're on your own for the rest of the seam because it's all done the same way. And then the last thing you have to do to finish your hat is make a pom-pom. And I like the dark green, or you can go sprinkly and mix the colors for your pom-pom. Now see? That's my last red bar. And over here, that's my last red bar. It's peeking out between white bars, and I can pull that all closed. See, these are still too loose, so I have to pull them closed. And there we go. That's my mattress stitch. So you're on your own for the mattress stitch, and I think you'll really have a good time making these little hats. They don't take too terribly long. They don't take a tremendous amount of yarn. You might discover that you really like them out of scrappy colors. So have some fun with it. One of the things that you can do that helps me is you can go and hit subscribe and you can click on the notify bell. That helps my YouTube statistics and it suggests the machine knitting channel to more knitters. When they do searches, the channel will come up 
and maybe they'll try machine knitting and discover what tremendous opportunities we have to be creative and make beautiful, beautiful knits. So I hope you will do that. Also, check the description for some other things. I am going to put in a link to a mattress stitch video and I am also going to put in some links to my websites. I really hope you'll consider joining my new Facebook page. I have been blogging for years but I am posting on Facebook as well now. So this is a way to get all my latest content. Thanks everybody. I hope you have a beautiful holiday season.